Hey everyone, yes I'm back finally after 10 months or so. As you might know I moved to a different house and uh, I needed some time to get the house and of course the new Lego room ready. Most of the work uh, is done now, so uh, I'm back again. So this is actually a happy episode and a sad episode in one. The happy part is mainly because this is the 50th episode in the work in progress series. My god, I couldn't imagine making 50 episodes for one project. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a bit eager to start working on the container terminal again. Um, so that's the first good news. And the other good news is that the red crane has survived the moving to the new house in one piece. There are some loose pieces, but nothing serious. So I'm very happy with that. The blue crane instead, it did not survive. So here's the story. I was working on these shells over there and there was one row of tables against the wall. And uh, on top of those tables were, uh, was another layer of tables upside down with the legs uh, hanging lengthwise uh, also in this direction. So the right table on top of the other table was sticking out for, I don't know, 40% 40, 40 or something. So 40% of it was hanging above the void and the blue crane was below there on the ground. So I stepped on the tables to put on the, the shelves and I said to myself, Aryan, you're an intelligent guy. Do not step to the right when you're finished putting up the shelves because then I would go down with the table into the blue crane. And that is exactly what happened. I was done with the shelves. I stepped to the right and here I was like a Californian surf dude sliding down on top of the table at an angle of, I don't know, 45 degrees or so. Crashing into the blue crane, it was horrible. I really could kill myself in that moment. I must have been shouting and cursing for like an hour or so. I actually hurt my hip with that move, but that's fine again. I'm able to repair myself, unfortunately Lego is not. So that's the status of the blue crane right now, so I'm really, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look good. So it's still in the plastic wrap and that was because there was a lot of dust during the renovation of the house. Really fine dust, like you don't want that stuff on your Lego. So uh, we're going to remove the plastic and see how it actually looks under there. And this is where I forgot to put on the microphone, so I'm going to walk you through it. This looks really bad, everything is in pieces. So there's a broken electrical wire that is uh, the least of my concerns right now. This part is for the monorail control, which has survived pretty well. Also the modes for starting and stopping the motor wheels seem to have survived uh, fortunately, I'd say, because they're uh, pretty expensive and actually they're not being made anymore. The electronics inside here, this building, uh, have been protected fortunately and are still intact. The control hub seems to have gotten a big hit and also the flashlight on top here has also gotten a hit. Here's a light that should be on the ceiling of the control room, which is completely destroyed. The other monorail switches have survived as well, fortunately. So, so by the looks of it, there isn't much actually broken. It's one big mess and the problem is that I first built the whole thing. And after that I installed the wiring. Now everything has to be put back together with uh, wiring already in place, which uh, will be an enormous hassle. So let's get started rebuilding. So after a few hours of uh, building and mostly solving a puzzle, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. Um, I have this structure standing up right now. And as you can see, there's a missing a support, which took a rare, very big hit. And I have a box with supports in blue, yellow, red and green, I believe. Can't find it anywhere. It, it, I have it somewhere, but I don't know where. So. <laughs> I just need to get used to uh, to where I store my Lego. And yeah, there are multiple places where I can look. I've looked there, but couldn't find it. Uh, for now, it's sturdy enough to uh, continue the work. I'll uh, encounter it someday, somewhere. No problem. Um, so I'll be now going to this module over there. We're gonna put it on top of the uh, structure. And then I have to look at the cable guiding system that's what you see here with the wheels and um, the parts that you see here so there was a system a cable guiding system here parallel to the structure 
which was already a bit dodgy, it wasn't very stable. Um, so I'm gonna look and see if I can fix that. Oh, it's actually starting to look like something or not. So, it's not exactly the same as it was. Um, I, I couldn't figure out exactly how I built it the last time, so I changed some things. And um, yeah, the, the thing that mostly changed is the rail that you see here that, that guides the, the cables and the tube for the uh, pneumatic system. Um, I completely redesigned that. It wasn't very strong, very stable in the previous version, so I, uh, I just rebuilt it like a, like a better version now. Um, so yeah, for now this is it. This part, the monorail part, is still a mess because, yeah, I, I don't exactly know how did how it works. I, I took the mo monorail out, as you can see. Why I did that, I c can't remember. Probably because there was a long layer, um, monorail part sticking out on this side or something. So this part here. We'll just leave it like this and um, yeah, we'll see about that later on. First first uh, things first and that is getting this crane back uh, to work again. So as you might see, I just left the, uh, the wires loose uh, for, the, uh, for the lighting. Because for now, primary thing is to get the power on and see what it does. Well, as you can see, I need to uh, solder some wires here. There are also some wires with some damage that I need to cut and re-solder uh, re again. And yeah, well, that's it. Um, these are the parts that are damaged, that can be thrown away. Obviously, the, the blue support is uh, the biggest one. But as you can see, there's also some parts with a huge dent inside. So the force must have been very strong, because Lego is it's strong, but... Making a dent like that, whoa. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's not it's not too much. I, I would have expected a lot more. Uh, there's one other thing. Um, you see here, there's, there's the, 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 the slopes that you see here, the curved slopes. I left, I left some out. And that's the part that you see here that needs to go there. But there's a gap. You see, there's a, there's a gap in here. And I remember that had a purpose. <laughs> I honestly, I cannot remember what the purpose is. So maybe it was on this side, or maybe it was a bit more to the right. I have no clue. But um, I'm just going to uh, leave it off and yeah, maybe I'll en encounter a problem um, that makes me think, ah, yeah, that was it. So I'm gonna solder it now, the, 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 a few wires here. I'm gonna check the electrical system once again. And then we're going to power it on and see if we got fireworks or not. Well now the, well now the power, well now the moment of truth. I'm going to enable the power and see uh, if we get fireworks or not. Uh, let me just, yeah, like that. A bit less light. If we get fireworks, we might enjoy it as well. So here we go. Well, that's disappointing. Nothing happens. <laughs> Oh boy, okay, um, well I did something wrong obviously, because um, the lighting ain't working, why is it, ah that's maybe because there's two, uh, two power lines, no, I, connect, I connected both of them here, why, 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 I'm gonna have a look, let's find out, so I forgot there's a switch here. <laughs> And it uh, completely disables the crane, including the lighting. Um, so, but this part over here uh, doesn't do anything. Um, I can enable the power now, like we did before. Um, it doesn't do anything now, because there should be a light now, but there isn't on the Arduino and uh, the, the power regulator, but there's not. So uh, the power going to that system is not good. Um, I don't care for right now. We're gonna focus on the crane first. The monorail is a separate system. So um, yeah, let's once more try to uh, enable the switch. Um, let's see if we can enable it. Oh yeah, there's something happening here. All right, 
let's have a look. All right, the lighting is still working. That's cool. Uh, we have a blinking LED here. I, I put some LEDs in here. There's a red one, a yellow one, I believe, and a, and a blue one and a green one, something like that. Uh, they are status LEDs, um, but I can't remember what the status of a flickering blue LED is. So, yeah, I have to look in the inside the source code for that. Um, so, there should be a light here as well, in the control room, which is dark. So that doesn't work either. And, let me see. No, it doesn't seem, seem that the Arduino is powered as well. Oh boy, so there are some failures in the electrical system. And um, yeah, I'm gonna have a look at it. And um, next episode, I'm gonna have it fixed. And we're gonna have a look at uh, how the crane performs, how it moves. And I'm um, gonna add another support here. Because it's a bit wobbly over here. So um, I'm gonna fix that with, as you can see, there's a support there. And yeah, the idea was that, that not having a support on this side was that I could have a nice camera shot of any moving uh, crane. So now I'm gonna leave it out for now. Yeah, all right, so um, I'm gonna fix the electrical system um, and then we're gonna see uh, in the next episode how it works and if it still works. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.